Dudes are out here lonely and expiring alone. Dudes are out here going into the morgue and people not even claiming their bodies. And it is definitely at higher rates than women. Like my girl says, this is why they are so deeply scared of being single and dying. It's not it's not us that's going through that at their numbers. It really isn't. These medical professionals will get on these here internet streets up and down sideways, say that the men are the ones expiring alone, that the men in nursing homes have no family coming to visit them, that women, when when it is our time to go, we're surrounded by our loved ones, that we actually have visitors to nursing homes, whereas dudes are expiring and nobody's even coming to claim them at the morgue. They get this shocked Pikachu face when women say that we're not concerned about dying alone and getting a cat. I would rather take a cat over you. And then they are getting this shocked Pikachu face. Well, I have a woman who reached out to me who works in as a hospice nurse and works in palliative care. Let's see what she has. So this woman inboxes me. She says, I'm a hospice palliative nurse and I go into homes to visit patients and I hear all types of things. She says, most of my male patients are single, never took care of themselves. She says, so basically these men lived rough lives, drugs, alcohol, etc. cetera. Um, very few are married. The married ones' wives are telling me how verbally and physically abusive the men have been since getting sick. I asked the ages, the general ages, and she says ages 40 to 60. These dudes, and I've already said this before, we have seen quite a few dudes expire before they hit 60. These dudes are getting sicker earlier because they don't know how to care for themselves or they are medic they're self-medicating with drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and they eat a bunch of fast food. This is on them and it is showing these numbers. We are in the find out stage. OK, so this is what she continues with. I found out today that one of my patients, he's 42, his wife packed up and took the kids and left. Remember, she's a palliative nurse. so. She she sees it. Apparently, they verbally abuse their wives because they are sick and can no longer they can no longer provide. Then try to manipulate me and say it's the wives. So recognize as these dudes are not taking care of themselves and they build themselves as a provider. They lead with their money. We see them talk about their money all the time. Recognize that what happens when they are not building relationships outside of that supposed provider role. They get angry. And then some of these other people are leading with their peen. They also become mad and angry when their peen no longer works. She says, it's sad the state that I see these individuals. They don't take care of themselves and are angry with the women around them for being sick. So they get angry. They lash out at the women around them. And then they get the shocked Pikachu face when, when they leave. So this woman says, um, I had a patient swearing at me today saying he's ready to go. He went outside to smoke and his wife tells me I'm ready for him to go too. He's so mean. So I'm in blue. Um, I'm saying that these dudes are dying younger and younger. So many of them eat like crap, are mean, don't cultivate relationships and drink and drug too much. And then she she agrees as a palliative nurse. Yes, they are. They tell me about their past. Lots of drugs and in and out of jail. I refuse to see black men. They are argumentative. Tell me the white man sent you and always asking for my numbers. The whole nurse and purse situation. These men sign up for the services we provide. And then when I go to do my job, they are resistant and tell me I know how to take care of myself. She said their feet look like um, anchors, blood pressure and blood sugar are high and they are on dialysis. I see you doing a bang up job there, sir. No wife, no children in sight. The first thing I ask, what did you do? And then they admit I was abusive, cheating or an absent parent. She says they confide in me, but it just makes me look at all these men on social media, talking down to women, talking about dying alone when the stats show it's the males that do. Ladies, these dudes are in the find out situation. They have not cultivated these relationships. And I say this. Time and time again, pour into the people who have poured into you. If these men didn't cultivate relationships, if they didn't love on their children, if they didn't support um, a spouse, then they deserve 
the consequences of their action. Let them have it. Do not rush in and and protect them from what they truly deserve. And I, I'm just saying, let them live the life that they deserve. I'm not saying that we have to do anything outside of not getting involved or in the way of their karma. So that is that one. I have a secondary video that I'm about to follow up with where a male doctor from the continent of Africa is speaking on what he is seeing, despite the fact that he's speaking from the male perspective. So that is coming in part two. Now I want to talk about a tweet from this man. And since I don't know how to pronounce his first name, I will just call him Dr. Emma. He is coming out of Uganda. This tweet was emailed to me. This is what Dr. Emma says. He says, I have worked on old men in their 70s and women in their 70s. Most men in their 70s I have seen coming to the hospital are always alone, forgotten and sad. Be it poor or rich, most of them are always without anyone to take care of them. The truth is men die alone and it's sad. Old women, on the other hand, will be escorted by over three caretakers, daughters, sons, grandsons, and granddaughters, even on just outpatient visits. This old man came in for surgery only with his belongings. We had to probe until a daughter came around. And if you give birth to only boys, it's worse. Let's learn to take care of our fathers. Now, as you can see, this is a man and he is he, you know, he's sympathetic to men. You can see, you can hear that he's sympathetic to men, but he's still saying the exact same thing that women in these medical fields say. Men are having a hard time. And since this is continental Africa, this is out of Uganda, I can just imagine why this is like this. But also it's global. The the perspective that men are just supposed to be providers is global. So like I said, this is a man and this doctor is sympathetic to the men, but these people don't listen to women, not even the doctors. They are supposedly the logical ones and still can't put together one plus one is two. They do not understand that you have got to pour into your relationships, even when women up and down, sideways, all across social media are telling men, y'all need to do better with your relationships they still don't want to listen. So this man says, I say this every day. As a man, you will never be loved. Just live happily, be responsible, take care of them, but expect less from those you call my family. Save some money for yourself alone. So they are still not listening. They don't believe in pouring into their family. Women, girls, we are socialized early on to be caretakers. The men simply think that being a provider is enough. They think. And a lot of these people don't care about the fact that they cheat. They don't speak. They don't speak life and love into their relationships. They simply think that going to work is enough. And so Dr. Emma says, I have come to believe this. Like I said, he is um, extra sympathetic to the men. And so then this woman says, hundreds of people have given you the answer and you're ignoring it now in favor of this self-indulgence. You are on the path your patients took. So she is speaking directly to Dr. Emma, but Dr. Emma isn't listening to what the women are saying. And so this next woman says, I'm watching him ignore any answer that isn't one blaming women. And so this person says, let men build the bond with their children and relatives. So they are giving the answer. Men need to bond. Men need to create relationships. And so then Dr. Emma says, Why do we think it happens to almost all men at that age? So he is not reflecting on these answers. And keep in mind, this is a doctor. He has some smarts, but he is still a man who is not giving any responsibility to the men. And like that person said before, he is going to be on the same track because he probably believes that he doesn't have to build relationships in in his answers. He believes that. And so... um. (laughs) This So the response, he, well, he says, why do we think it happens to almost all men at that age? And then the next, and the woman says, because they are paying for their sins. They are reaping the consequences because they have not cultivated relationships. And then the man that follows, you are just a man basher. 
These men do not want to hear any of this. This is the consequences of their own action and it's the consequences of their inability to listen to women. Okay, so once again, Dr. Emma's question was, why do we think it happens to almost all men at that age? And Noni responds, because men actually aren't good people to their families. Men believe handling finances is the be all. Have actual relationships with your family and relatives, create bonds and be a decent person. You'll be fine. That is perfectly, that's a reasonable answer. But then look at this man. Uh, He says, I see, be kind on your profile. What an irony. So he's still just not accepting it. And she says, holding men accountable is unkind. Okay. And so then he says, this is what is unkind. Men actually aren't good people to their family. Sounds like misandry. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. So they are going to continue down that path. Women and children are opting out of taking care of these people who have not poured into them. And instead of hearing women, they they label it as misandry, being unkind. They ignore women. So this is going to be their fate. So this is what Fizzy says. By that age, most men have done the most to tear apart their families. Most men are heartbreakers for their families. I've seen many families from my hometown. Their latter wives aren't always down for tough times like the first wives are. So they leave. But the first was already mistreated. She moved on. The kids were already broken. It's hard to have anyone there. I think a wise man should choose to grow old with the family he built first unless otherwise. And so instead of internalizing what she says, a man comes in and be and, and is defensive. Most men, you said, like women, are not doing the most as well. We are online. We are seeing different cases of women sending their husband out abroad. Women know how to turn the kids against their father easily. It's just so sad and unfortunate. It's meant to be that way. There's nothing we can do about it. So he deflects. He shifts to women. He's ignoring women. And then Regardless, since there's nothing that they that they can do about it, absolutely. We're going to go right back to what that doctor said in that men are just going to expire alone. He says down here, um, let's learn to take care of our fathers. Well, if the men that are in this comment section are a reflection of their culture and what men are thinking globally, if men are refuse to listen to women, refuse to heed um, the call to create relationships, then this is what's going to happen to them. You guys go ahead, jump in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Do you have any experiences? I like to hear them. Like, comment, share.